What's going on all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition and join me today for my overview of the Superman Batman Omnibus Volume 2 from DC Comics. So let's get started. For those of you asking me where my overview was, it is finally here. So here is the sequel to, or rather the follow-up to Superman Batman Omnibus Volume 1. Uh, no longer is Jeff Loeb or Ed McGinn as Michael Turner working on the book. Uh, but we have a whole different creative team. There's a lot of creators in here. So for all of you asking me where my overview was, it is finally here. Uh, but before I go any further, a huge thank you to Dying Breed Collectors for sending us a copy of this book so I could do an overview. They were kind enough to send us a copy and they sell books online and they also have an eBay shop and that's Dying Breed Collectors. So Superman, Batman, Omnibus Volume 2, we have the logo up here, this beautiful Francis Manipole piece of artwork. I think that's from the, what was it, the mashup story arc? This Superman Batman logo right there, Omnibus Volume 2. Always love this right here, the Superman Batman. Two heroes are better than one. I believe this is Ethan Van Skyver, and that might be Shane Davis right there. Uh, underneath the dust jacket, let's look at it. We have this piece right here, and I think that's uh, Adrian Saif, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but then again, the Superman Batman spine right here, Omnibus Volume 2, identical to what you get in the dust jacket. And this is really cool. It's what the flaps look like. It's this image right here, again, from Adrian Saif. And the book retails for $125. So let's get this sucker open, look at the artwork, and talk a little bit about some of the stories you're going to find in here. So let's get this opened. Here is what your end paper looks like. You have this image of Superman right there, and this is Ian Churchill, piece of artwork. Oh my gosh, here are all your creators, all your writers, pencilers, inkers, colorists, letterers, and collection cover artists, and that's uh, Francis Manipal. So I was right, doesn't say who the internal cover art was. And we kick it off with this particular issue of Superman Batman, and this is issue 44. So. Before we go any further, that's one thing that DC has done for a long time. They don't put uh, the actual cover. They don't put the title. They don't put the issue number in the back. So this is pretty much what you get. It's not that big of a deal. I know it bothers some people. Some people would rather have the cover intact the way that it was when it was originally coming out. But you get the full piece of artwork is the way that I see it. So with this, you kick off a story that has Superman and Batman team up. And I really enjoy this story. It's a lot of fun. And that's a word I'm going to be using a lot for this particular omnibus. Uh, this is where Superman and Batman decide to gather all the kryptonite around the Earth and shoot it off and get it destroyed. Because Superman has had enough of this uh, being a big burden for him. So they team up and together go around the world. And then, of course, there's some misunderstandings. Um, all of this written by Michael Green. The artwork here provided by Shane Davis. It's some really nice artwork in this particular era of Superman, Batman. So there are a lot of different creators that whose work you're going to see through these pages. But before we talk about those creators, we do need to talk about what's collected in this particular omnibus. So this particular omnibus has Superman, Batman 44 all the way to 87 and annuals three through five. Uh, the book, like I mentioned, retails for $125 and has 1,232 pages. So this does go all the way until the book was canceled. And it got canceled, not really because of sales, but mainly due to the fact that things were wrapping up for the DC Universe and they were gonna start over anew. So with the new 52 came a new era for, uh, for the world's finest. So there are a lot of good stories in here. Uh, you're going to find the works of mainly, towards the beginning, Michael Green and Mike Johnson. Then you have Joe Casey, Paul Levitz, Colin Bunn, uh, Dan Abden and Andy Lanning doing some of the stuff in here. Peter Johnson and oh, Judd Winnick has a really powerful story. Uh, Peter Tomasi, Len Wein. And then as far as the artwork, well, you saw Sean Davis towards the beginning. You Then after his story arc, you have the... Raphael Albuquerque right here. There's Ian Churchill. 
uh, Francis Manipal, Wills Portacio, Scott Collins, uh, Jason Fabok, and Duncan Rolau, Chris Batista, Lee Bermejo, just a bunch of different Rag Morales, different artists uh, supplying the artwork for this particular era. So, going back to what I was saying, this... I've been asked, you know, is this as good as Volume 1? And I'll be honest with you. I wasn't the biggest fan of Volume 1. To me, Volume 1 with Jeff Loeb and Ed McGinnis and Michael Turner, the best way I can describe that those type of stories are just fun. And that's what you get in this. They're just more fun stories. There really aren't any that memorable, if you will. There's a couple in here that I think, oh, that is really cool. Like having Paul Levitz come back and write more Legion of Superheroes, including Superboy, or having Judd Winnick deal with the whole Batman R.I.P. story. I thought that was done really well. Uh, but any, like, you know, most people, when they think of Batman and Superman stories that stand out, they can give you, like, their top ten favorite stories. For me, this particular era was more like a summer blockbuster was more like just a fun cartoon and there's nothing wrong with the batman superman cartoon i love those uh, but that's what this reminded me of just standalone stories that really don't affect the dc universe as a whole however in this particular volume you are going to see some crossovers you're going to see a crossover with oh, what is it the reign of doomsday you're going to see the blackest night tie-ins in here there's some wonderful Wills Portacio artwork. I do like this one. This is like inner space where Superman is trapped in this tiny, tiny universe and Batman has to go in and rescue him because he only has a few hours to live because time just changes differently in this particular interstellar universe or inner space, not interstellar. Wrong movie. Uh, but it's got artwork in there by Wills Portacio. And then you have Francis Manipal coming in and lending his talents. This is the story of the mashup. Uh, so Superman and Batman wake up in a different type of world where there are mashup characters such as Night Lantern, Hawk Beast, Star Canary, Aqua Borg, Donna Wonder, like you can read yourself. And the one that stands out is always Flash. Like, he didn't mash up with anybody, but there is a mashup with him. And then the villains are mashed up, so you get, like, Doomstroke and uh, the Joker, Joker Lex, Lex Joker, something like that. Then we have oh, the Robin. This is Rafael Albuquerque again. Robin and Supergirl teaming up. And they do team up a couple of times in here. One of the annuals features uh, the Scarecrow giving nightmares to not just Batman and Superman, but also Lex Luthor and Joker. That one's pretty interesting. This is the tie-in right here to The Blackest Night. So this is actually written by Scott Collins, and the artwork is supplied by Scott Collins. And you see a bunch of just different characters from the Batman and Superman Rogue Gallery getting that, becoming part of the Black Lanterns. I believe those have been collected previously in the Omnibus, the Blackest Night Omnibus. And then during this era right here is when Michael Green and Mike Johnson kind of step back a little bit and other writers start writing in, whether it's a fill-in writer. Oh, this is such a good book. I think this is from the annual. It's a return to the world of Batman Beyond. This one's written by Paul Levitz. Yeah, that is a beautiful cover. As a matter of fact, I think this is the very first appearance of Batman Beyond in the DC Universe. And it's weird to say that, right, because he was in a cartoon. But kind of like Harley Quinn, this is the comic book that... This is his first actual comic book appearance in the DC Universe. It's a beautiful cover, too. And again, that one is Paul Levitt. Here we have... Oh, Jerry Ordway teaming up with Paul Levitt. I forgot about that. So some classic storytellers here. This is the one that will lead into the Legion of Superheroes story arc here. You have Adam Hughes. I think these are just two-pagers. Yeah. So these are just two-page stories right here from different creators. But just showcasing some of the artwork. And then, of course, something happens in the DC timeline where this title makes little sense. Superman, Batman. Something happens to one of the characters. <laughs> kind of gave it away with the Batman R.I.P. So I like the way that the writers handled that. Sometimes there's a team-up between... Um, Robin and Supergirl sometimes it's um, the newish Batman with Superman sometimes it's time travel sometimes it's other dimensions coming in and just raising havoc 
But you do have, oh, this is uh, Ed Bennis right here, Brett Booth right there. And I'm always curious to see who has read these stories, who was a big fan of these. Uh, I think I had a f one friend of mine that actually got every single issue. He loved this era. He thought this was like one of the best comics being published and nobody was picking it up. Nobody was talking about it. You know, what's interesting about this is like there are a lot of stories in here where, oh, Superman is dying. Oh, no, Batman is dying. Um... Uh, and a lot of cartoon-like stories, like where Superman and Batman switch powers. There's also the return of the composite Superman. Oh, the Shadow Pact. I forgot about them. You do get some team-ups with the Shadow Pact in here. A lot of obscure characters that show back up. Like, uh, you get the return of the Silver Banshee. This is the mid... I think this is the medieval story arc right here. Um, and... Just a bunch of different type of art, bunch of different storytellers, especially when you get towards the end, or I'm sorry, towards the middle of the run after this, when Michael Green and Mike Johnson step back, you get a bunch of different writers coming in. Uh, and like I mentioned, there's one in here that does stand out to me, and it is the Judd Winnick story. Yeah, this one right here. I really like this story. I thought this was well done. And this should have been added to one of the collections of uh, battle for the cow but this is uh, marco rudy supplying the artwork there so you've got a little bit of taste of the artwork and what to expect in here and let me just go back make sure i didn't miss anything oh the little leaguers i forgot to talk about them and then the little injustice league some more ed bennis stuff but let's take a look here i believe that's david finch uh let's take a look here at the extras because there's not a lot of extras i guess when you have that many issues you're going to be lacking in extras but here are the extras you do have some variants some cover layouts interior art this is for francis manipul and then these are sketches and layouts for different pages by jerry ordway some more layouts and then this is the cover concept for Batman or Superman Batman annual number five now as far as the paper quality it is the same paper quality as volume one uh, the same glossy paper that they used it's a little bit thinner though that I will say that that I don't mean like thin thin I just mean it's definitely thinner than volume one uh, the binding is sewn binding I think for a book this size that is a nice eye to have on it so towards the middle of course the book lays over perfectly and towards the beginning here, this is with the Shane Davis story arc, where there's a guy playing Batman in a movie, and then towards and then towards the end. Honestly, for a book this size, I think it opens up rather well. Yeah, I mean you're gonna have to open it up properly a couple of times. I I opened it up about three times. You know, did the proper uh, opening of an omnibus, making sure stretching the spine. I uh, did that about three times, but. Yeah, I think it lays over rather well. I've seen a lot worse, that's for sure. But that, as they say, is that. If you are interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know near mint condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking it up, if you've never read any of these stories, or if you remember some of these stories if you've read them before. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. I would love to get back to them. And if you have read this, I'm curious what your favorite story arc was, whether from the first volume or this one, or even the most recent volumes or the New 52 era. Everyone, please stay healthy and safe out there. Smash that like button. Don't forget that we are on Patreon and on Spreadshop. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. And more importantly, like I mentioned, stay healthy and safe. Much love. <laughs>